Having ulcerative colitis can be difficult and frustrating to explain to people. This is because the condition is often referred to as an invisible disease. To the outside world, a person with the chronic illness may look perfectly healthy as they complete tasks such as walking their dog, socializing with their peers, or completing an assignment for work. But on the inside, these individuals might be undergoing great discomfort and excruciating pain. Overall, the feeling of being invisible is something that ulcerative colitis patients experience on a daily basis. In this video, we will dive deep and explain the effect of ulcerative colitis on the human body. Before we begin to discuss the details of ulcerative colitis, it is important to understand its relationship with IBD. First off, what is IBD? IBD stands for Inflammatory Bowel Disease. It is defined as a group of autoimmune diseases that cause chronic inflammation in both the small and large intestines. The inflammatory disease consists of two major forms, commonly known as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. People affected by these diseases experience shared abdominal symptoms such as diarrhea, abdominal pain, blood stools, and vomiting. Specifically, Crohn's disease causes inflammation along the lining of the digestive tract. In contrast, ulcerative colitis, long-lasting inflammation, occurs in some parts of the digestive tract, primarily the colon. So now let's dive into ulcerative colitis. How do we characterize ulcerative colitis? Ulcerative colitis means the inflammation of the colon. Specifically, inflammation extends from the rectum to the proximal colon. There are three types of ulcerative colitis. They include ulcerative proctitis, left-sided colitis, and extensive colitis. Moreover, the hallmark symptom of individuals with ulcerative colitis is bloody stool with or without mucus, as well as associated symptoms include urgency, rectal and abdominal pain, restlessness, weight loss, and fever, depending on the severity of the disease. Unfortunately, the course of ulcerative colitis is unpredictable. The disease is identified by periods of remission and relapse. In other words, individuals undergo periods of no inflammation, thus experiencing no symptoms, or individuals undergo periods of inflammation, thus experiencing flare-up. As of now, the cause of ulcerative colitis is not fully understood, which makes it tricky to pinpoint the origin of the disease. However, the underlying pathophysiology of it can be described as the inflammation and ulceration of the colon's mucosal lining. Let's take a closer look at the large intestine and the cells that are involved. Here are the intestinal epithelial cells and the mucosa layer with bacteria on its surface. The M cell are specialized epithelial cells of the mucosa. Penis cells secrete compounds that create your first line of defense and goblet cells produce and secrete the mucus. It is hypothesized that the M cells transport an antigen, a foreign substance that induces an immune response from the lumen to the cells of the immune system. The antigen presenting cell will process and present itself to T helper cells type 2 to activate it. Consequently, this activation causes the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. The Th2 cells will give rise to IL-4 while the expansion of NKT cells will give rise to IL-13 and IL-5. Essentially, there is an imbalance of pro-inflammatory cytokines and anti-inflammatory cytokines. For instance, a healthy GI tract has more anti-inflammatory cytokines than pro-inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines like IL-10 and TGF-beta arise from Treg cells. In contrast, a GI tract affected by ulcerative colitis has more pro-inflammatory cytokines than regulatory cytokines. These pro-inflammatory cytokines include IL-4, IL-13, and IL-5. Overall, the high production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and chronic inflammation is what leads to the complications associated with ulcerative colitis. The exact cause of ulcerative colitis is currently unclear. However, the condition seems to occur in response to specific risk factors. 
The main risk factors include environmental factors, genetics, gut microbiota, and autoimmunity. Currently, there is no cure for ulcerative colitis. Individuals with ulcerative colitis typically require treatment throughout their lives, as this is a chronic disease. However, the ultimate goal is to improve the quality of life of these individuals. This can consist of medication like 5-ASA, dietary modifications, nutritional supplementation, and even surgery. Furthermore, Usha Chauhan, a nurse practitioner in adult digestive diseases, will provide insight about current research on promising treatments that could effectively treat ulcerative colitis. We have a lot of research being done here. Dr. Paul Moyeti has been leading the research here in, uh, at McMaster and across Canada. There's been a lot of interest and basically enema or, or enema administration of fecal microbiota transplant from an individual without um, ulcerative colitis is then uh, inserted in the patient with ulcerative colitis. We've had some positive results on it. Um, we are still learning a lot more about it and um, there is a belief that certain people have the right mix, mixture of bacteria um, that is helping with the inflammation. So that's the point of, is that the point of the transplant? Yeah, the okay. transplant is you need to change the, um, the fecal microbiota in right. a patient with ulcerative colitis to a more normal uh, microbiota. We don't, we don't really know. I mean, you know, somebody with ulcerative colitis may have certain more species of certain bacteria or fungi yes. that are inflammatory versus uh, the people that or individuals that don't have. Thank you for watching. We hope you gained a better understanding about ulcerative colitis. For more information about the condition, please check out the following resources.